So my name's Jack Waters. I go by the name of J0117 from Bristol. I'm a grime artist. So since getting into this position of influence from social media and music, I've sort of tried looking at things that may not be talked about in modern day so much. For example, race, class, gentrification. And I've been hearing a lot of talk about white fragility, white privilege, white supremacy, and people's talking about whiteness as a whole. I've been seeing blog posts, Instagram challenges, Fiat 500, Twitter. So it's just got me a little bit curious, so I'm gonna go and find out a bit more about it. Hello, good to meet you. Hi Jay, it's really nice to meet you too. So my name is Leila Saad and I am a writer and a speaker and a teacher on issues of anti-racism and identity. And in the summer of 2018, I decided to run a 28 day challenge under the hashtag me and white supremacy. It was uh, using this process of reflective uh, journaling. And so what I was asking was a simple formula of a question. What have you learned about you and a particular aspect of white supremacy? And so we kicked off with day one, looking at white privilege. And it just was this incredible, it was like lighting a fire. It, it went viral. So what's your sort of definition of white supremacy? Yeah. So I think the first thing I think people need to understand is that white supremacy is not about, it's not a personal thing. If you are white or if you are given the privilege of being seen as white, you, um, will be treated as if you are superior to those who are black and brown and indigenous, which comes from, you know, colonialism, which comes from the slave trade. I know that the word white supremacy is often hard for many people to have to sort of look at. I'm not a white supremacist. That's those people who are, you know, the skinheads or the Nazis or the, the ones who, you know, use the racial slurs. But again, White supremacy is not something you can choose to opt in and opt out of because the whole foundation is set on this idea that white is superior. So Jay, I was really curious to hear about what it's been like for you, especially as a white man in an industry that is, uh, you know, music scene that is very black. Yeah, and I feel I'm aware that with the grind music and it being a voice of the unheard, I sort of see it as a voice of the streets. Of, I'm in a position now of influence. I need to be very conscious of sort of what I write about, what I what I do, what I put on social media. I still pay homage and love to the history and of, of the music, which I do, which I try to yeah. do as much as possible. It is an art form and it has to also relate to me and, 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 and be a part of me. Yeah, I think that that's the gray area that I think more of us, um, especially people who hold white privilege, need to be comfortable being in. It's not about you either are racist or not racist. You either are a good person or you're a bad person. You either are culturally appropriating or you're not culturally appropriating. And having more of the conversation of the complex layers of it, um, that we're all on this journey of, of trying to figure it out so that we can create a better world. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, listen to the first bar. So this is my mate Ems and somebody I do music with. So when I invited you down to have this conversation about whiteness, what did you initially think? Mm, it depends on how you talk about it, to be honest because a lot of conversations are just coming to dead ends. Well, we're this colour, we feel like this, and you're that colour and you feel like this. Like, I would say the dangers of having the, this conversation, when you start to understand how disconnected you are, and if they even want to make the connection, because it will affect their lifestyle, equality will take away from that, because they have more and we have less. So yeah, it's common knowledge that, that there's, there's a thing called Black Twitter, which is the black community on, on Twitter. Um, which is, it, at times, is very strong. 
you know, if, if, if somebody slips up in the white community, it's cancel o'clock, it is, it's game over for them. Some might think, oh, well, can't we have a white Twitter? My short and brutal answer would be, you can't have a white Twitter because you have everything else. I feel like this, is, this could be an, an example of the disconnect, innit? If a, a white person may go on Twitter, they'll go onto black Twitter, and then they'll see some sort of joke about a Fiat, you know, the, Fiat, the whole Fiat 500 gang, innit? Like, ditzy white girl stereotype, innit? Kind of thing, like, they drive a Fiat 500, watch Love Island 24-7. Cheeky Nandos. Cheeky Nandos, partying, partying in photos and... Yeah. Because that then begs the terrorists. Um, it's the same thing. It's the same thing as yeah. It's the same thing as stereotyping me as being a ga as, as being a gang member, isn't it? The difference between the stereotypes, like you can, you would stereotype a, a girl being for 500 Twitter. But that's not. That's a harmless stereotype, and it's stereotype me, black boy, gangster, and a gang does this, does that. There's, there's so much more. It's so much more harmful because these are things that are actually damaging the community and. Yeah. It can derail your whole life on the, yeah. in, on the other side of the spectrum. So, and it all stems from a place of negativity, really. Yeah, and ridiculous negativity because it it doesn't matter. It doesn't. What's the difference? The difference between me and you is my hair's thicker, your eyes are lighter, you burn yeah. easier. Yeah, that's it. Appreciate that. Um, love always, man. My G. Yes. I will start. I think whiteness means the norm. Whiteness means majority. We would get educated on white people oppressing other races and white people having slaves and going over and not doing very positive things in history. So that's why I feel like we do get told a history of whiteness, but it's not one to be proud of or mm. shout from the rooftops. Mm. That's you know? really interesting, actually. Because I always assume that history is still not really accurate and even what we are taught is, isn't what it is. But yeah, that's really interesting for you to say that. I'm from America. My mum came to England with no white privilege. She worked as a maid at, for rent. She works nine to five, six days a week. And she's done that for the past 12 years. White privilege doesn't necessarily have to be like financial but, but at the same time I think that sometimes it's hard for people to take that on board and to swallow that word privilege if they are somebody that grew up with nothing yeah and I think maybe there are degree I, I don't know whether agree, there are degrees of white privilege I think it's, it's Boris Johnson more white privilege than I am so it, de it depends on race class it depends on many things but it is a because lot it's a lot like even for me as a black woman of all of my life experience and I've worked at a university developing a race equality initiative, I'm still confused and like don't even know where to start and like with white British identity, um, I'll answer the question, I guess a lot of white people hold on to like the empire and you know the royals and I guess that's quite a big, I don't know, part of your identity or your culture? I would, I would, some people, I, I some, think people. some people, yeah, but yeah. me personally, yeah. I, I wouldn't say that's part of my identity. But it's I, always... I, yeah, and, and, and that's the interesting thing is that, that I would have spent a long time talking about diversity, mm -hmm. thinking about representation, and never, but never thought about, well, hang on a minute, I am actually white. What <laughs> yeah. does that mean? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's quite weird. It really, is very you think weird. About it, like, yeah. And with, like, this whole, like, when you say you just never thought about being white, it's just crazy yeah we have to think about being our skin color every single day yeah for sure. just well, always yeah. well all to the an time. extent like you, you said like you said it like that but like so i lived in a cultured area like i used to get stick for being the yeah, white kid all, the, all mm. day long and you have these conversations with people years after a situation happened and you say why did you do that to me and it's like because I, I wasn't mm -hmm. informed that like mm -hmm. i was informed wrong mm -hmm. and you i can now go have a drink with these guys mm -hmm. like it's like it's a very weird topic. It is. Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I know we're t having the conversation about whiteness, but I don't really know what the outcome of. Obviously, it, it allows us to say, oh, well, I'm, I agree, and, or, or that. But I, I suppose an, an awareness of white privilege, the system, institutions in which we operate, and then maybe not fall in for some of the manipulative messages which come from far-right groups. 
I can't be bothered to kind of always talk about, you know, oh, this happened today, you saw touch my hair, because it's just what happens. But maybe one day we won't have to deal with it. Someone will come step in and say, hold on a minute, that's not right. I and feel, me personally, I've probably subconsciously sort of just I, try yeah, and, yeah, same, try and same. like... See, that's, yeah. get... that can turn to that whole, I'm, I'm not proud to be white, to just... I, I, I don't even talk about it. Like, and that, that kind of, oh, you know, I, I, I'm not racist. That, I feel, I don't know. that That's not helpful. So, yeah. So it's not about being, it's not about being right on, is it? Being no, like, being absolutely real, being real not. Yeah. Name, it, just right. listening or trying to understand or, yeah. 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 I think we got into it, didn't we?